I know that the causality may not be there in the report, but at least anecdotally in my experience, I can absolutely see that that um, change in how we're practicing infrastructure management is probably a key driver in a lot of ways of how teams iterate and share responsibility um, for deployment and cloud management. Hey, I'm Steve McGee. I'm a reliability advocate at Google Cloud. Uh, I was an SRE for a long time, and now I help people build more reliable systems on the cloud. Hi, I'm Kyle Campbell, founder of C2Di. We are a modern development platform that helps companies measure the software developer experience. Been an entrepreneur for, and a self-taught software engineer for a long time, and love to help developers build internal developer platforms. So one of, one of the things that I really liked about the report this year, Steve, um, was how broad it went. But there was a, one specific area that I thought was very interesting. Um, in particular, the, um, the fact that if flexible infrastructure is the key to success. Um, I look at Dora a lot through the technical lens, the tooling, the workflow, and how developers work with the technology a lot, because I think a lot of the technology that we use is what shapes a lot of our experience as a developer. And one of the things that we've worked on a lot is trying to understand how infrastructure's code can be made more flexible for on-demand self-service, um, broadening and treating these sort of like practices that we know from traditional programming, imperative object-oriented programming as a way to build more robust and inheritable infrastructure. Um, and when I saw the report, it was um, awesome to see that for me in the report. Um, I think it basically said that the key takeaway is flexible infrastructure is a predictor of team performance, not just in how it's implemented, but obviously the fact that if you can iterate on your infrastructure, you'll have the ability to add new components, it will be more resilient to your point. Uh, and for me, it was the first time that I saw um, applied uh, mechanics like this, I guess I would say, in one of the reports. So I really, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it's pretty great. I think that there's we don't really go into the causality of these things, but we like to kind of ponder about them. And so I I like to think that it's it's about giving developers like the empowerment of actually changing the the infrastructure directly without having to know every single detail about that infrastructure. So it's like it's a self-service yet abstracted method for affecting infrastructure. Uh, which is something that just didn't exist before. So in the past, we had tickets where we had to open a ticket with the infrastructure team, uh, and we know that didn't work very well. Or the opposite was you own the entire system, like top to bottom, where you have to be a complete expert in all the things to do one little thing. So it's really this combination of um, abstraction and self-service that, that re results in these really good outcomes that I think we've... This is kind of why cloud works, right? <laughs> it's the ability to do these things really fast and have like you know great power um, with tiny keystrokes. Yeah, I mean, I think this is one of the areas in my mind that a lot of um, developer experience is actually being um, influenced positively by advancement within the SRE uh, practice and tool chain. What I like to see now is, is the advent of these new technologies that allow us to actually define infrastructure in languages that we're familiar with. The fact that I can write infrastructure in TypeScript as a developer makes it so much more intuitive for me to be able to jump in and understand that. Um, and I think it's coming full circle now where a lot of these developer experiences that actually drive at the efficiency um, that developers, you know, experience in the tool chain is actually coming mostly from the CR, uh, the SRE side um, with the advent of these things. Um, I know that the causality may not be there in the report, but at least anecdotally in my experience, I can absolutely see that that um, change in how we're practicing infrastructure management is, is probably a key driver in a lot of ways of how teams iterate and share responsibility um, for deployment and cloud management. Yeah, I think what you're getting at is uh, the other the other point that I want that I like to pull out of the report. Um, there's like the broad category of just like healthy culture, uh, but the specific like sub component of that that I really like is user centricity um, and being able to have teams who are focused on the end user and they're delivering value to that end user and everything they're doing is in the purpose of that end user value um, is part of why that works is because you don't have these siloed teams where one team is like defending their position or trying to reduce you know how much how many tickets come in through their their ticketing system or something like that they're really focusing on just I need to provision this infrastructure because I'm trying to get this thing out the door for the end user. 
um, it, it really helps by really, I mean, this is, this is value stream alignment, right? Whereas where we're trying to get to, to make sure that everyone is actually focusing on getting the, the stuff out to the, to the end customer. And that means, you know, breaking down these barriers, like don't make everyone learn a new language for every layer of the system that they're, that they're entering, uh, do it all in TypeScript. That's great. Right. So, so one person can, can work at the top of the stack and affect things all the way down and back up again. And they can, they can deliver that value basically autonomously. Um, if you can, if you can pull that off, you, you can be really flexible and you can get, you can get a lot done. Um, and, and this is the, the part that I pulled back to in the, in the report is specifically that user centricity is a part of your team's culture. Um, like we've found that uh, if individuals are, are doing this within a culture and they get rewarded, then you know that that team is going to be more successful over time because people are going to see that is being rewarded. If it's being suppressed, that's a sign of a bad culture that that needs to be you know modified. So if you're finding that people are being um, you know not not rewarding this user centrism, that's something that leadership can step in and 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 make changes about um, when it when it comes to like addressing your culture. If you want to learn more about Dora, check out dora.dev and you can join our community as well. There's a URL dora.community, which is an actual URL. You can type it into your browser and where we meet up a couple times a month to talk about Dora and how they're adopted uh, within communities and organizations. Uh, and then keep a lookout for Ask Dora. Uh, I call it Dora Bot, but we have an LLM that's trained on all of the Dora material for the past 10 years. And you can ask it any question you'd like uh, to better understand uh, all the material with Within, within the Dora reports over the years. Um, and don't forget to check out the Accelerate book as well. Um, it's, it's 10 years old and it still uh, rings true. If you're looking to advance your CICD practices and get Dora metrics automatically through that tool, uh, check out C2.ai. We will help you set up your CICD process to automatically collect and search and report on the Dora metrics that come out of your CICD practices. And then you can use those and compare them with the word of your team to understand how to continuously improve over time. I want to say a big thank you to Steve from Dora for joining us and we'll see you soon.